Today we will have a look inside this great looking building. The aquarium building of the Berlin Zoo. That houses one of my favorite reptile exhibits I've visited thus far. We start at the ground floor where you can find the aquarium exhibit, a classical older aquarium building, really dark setting, most lights coming from the aquariums themselves. The size of the building does not allow for huge aquariums, but they had a nice selection overall and were able to showcase many aspects of aquatic life. And also in this video I have tried to add as many species names as I could but I was not sure or uneducated on all of them. So if there is a species you can add, feel free to share those in the comments. Now it is time for the reptile exhibit. When you walk up the stairs, the first thing you see is the longest lizard in the world. The ambiance and overall feel of the reptile section is very different as the aquarium section. Many of the terrariums had a part glass ceiling so there was a lot of natural light. It was super clean and well kept and many well thought out cohabitations of animals from the same habitats. I got a lot of inspiration from this exhibit and their approaches. Every setup had live plants, amazing looking background and seemed to have a deep substrate. Seeing this cohabit with the Heloderma was a nice reminder to do a zoo tour at the Burger Zoo where the Heloderma are actually kept with Crantales. This was one of my favorite terrariums. The small spider tortoises had plenty of space and were very active. And seeing the Standingi in this environment was just really cool. I found a lot of examples where with plenty of space, knowledge of behavior and requirements, a cohabitation of different species can be done right.
with some obvious exceptions there were not a lot of new species for me and there were not a lot of species that were really rare from a more conservation point of view but it was really fun to actually see some species that were kept a lot in the European hobby in the past that mostly originated from imports. Seeing them presented in these setups really made me appreciate them more. A good reminder that seeing a lot of animals in bad condition in often poorly literariums in a store or on a reptile show depreciates a lot of the beauty of many of these species. The reptile floor was divided in two sections, one more arid section which is now coming to a close and one more humid side. Here you saw a lot of species naturally found in more humid and vegetated areas. Also all these terrariums looks great, there was a lot of vegetation, it made it a bit harder to actually get some good footage of animals, but I cannot be mad about this. I always like a zoo that balances the public's and the animals needs, with plenty of options for the animals to get away out of sight and get some privacy. In this enclosure I did see a first for me, the very special Tuatara. It was set up very naturalistically and if you felt the window you could feel it was cooled to a lower temperature as the building. Unfortunately there was no staff in sight because I would have loved to talk to them about the Tuataras and some of the other animals they had on display. In between the two sections there was an area with bigger crocodilians and turtles including a species I am glad I did not buy when I had the chance. The size of this Orlidia was just astonishing, I have never seen one this big.
here you can see why I don't often show overviews of zoos. I like to keep people's privacy in mind. We are one floor up where you enter the amphibian and vertebrate selection, which seem to be the busiest area of the whole zoo. Maybe this also has to do with the fact that you can actually enter the aquarium building separately from the zoo. So that's very cool if you're ever in the area but don't have time for a full zoo tour. This whole area was again nicely set up and they had a great selection of animals representing the amphibian and the vertebrate worlds. I am sure I have missed some interesting species during this tour but I will eventually come back so if there's any species I missed and must see please let me know.